Thank you for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Iji Yoon in Seoul. Let's get started with a look at today's highlights. Kia Motors suspended overtime work at its plants across Korea starting today after a court ruling that bonuses must be included when calculating regular wages. The government is planning to discuss the issue of fine dust air pollution at the Korea-China summit and other regional gatherings. These stories are more coming right up. But first, the government has announced it will scrap two labor-related regulations adopted by the previous Park Geun-hye administration. They include rules that make it easier to lay off low-performing workers and requires a majority consensus from employees for a company to make any revisions to working conditions. Now, the decision came during a labor ministry meeting earlier today in which the ministry said labor and the wider public had not been properly consulted prior to the rules enactment. Umbrella labor groups had been pushing for their cancellation as a condition for resuming dialogue with the central government. A recent Bank of Korea report showed Asia's fourth largest economy had one of the worst labor employer relations in the world. Korea came in at a lowly 135th out of 138 countries surveyed by the World Economic Forum. Kia Motors is scrapping overtime work for its employees effective today. The sudden move comes less than a month after a court ordered Kia to dole out hundreds of millions of dollars worth of back pay and a victory to the company's labor union. Our Eunice Kim has more. Starting today, Kia Motors will scrap overtime work and reduce extra work days for laborers at all three of its domestic factories. Late last week, Korea's second-largest automaker announced it would cut its day shift by 10 minutes and its night shift by 20 minutes, writing off a total of 30 minutes of overtime that Kia's workers log on average. By doing so, the automaker estimates it will save about 1 million won, or about 885 U.S. dollars per worker per year, which could slash production by 3 percent, or some 41,000 cars annually. The move comes some three weeks after its court defeat in late August. The Seoul Central District Court ruled regular bonuses and lunch stipends should be included in a worker's basic wage, obligating Kia to cough up some $353 million in back pay, owed between August of 2008 and October 2011. Overall, the decision stands to hand Kia an $885 million bill in extra wages, which analysts say is heavy enough a burden to push the automaker to a net loss in the third quarter, for the first time in a decade. This has sales have been sluggish in both China and the U.S. In that retaliation tinged China, Kia sold 170,000 vehicles over the first half of 2017, an on-year plunge of 52%. In the U.S. market, it's facing shrinking sales, falling profits, and an uncertain future amid pressure from Washington to renegotiate the chorus FTA. Kia's labor union has expressed its annoyance with the company's latest decision, calling it unilateral as it was never consulted prior. But the challenging business climate is not exclusive to Kia and could be a matter of time before other manufacturing firms in Korea follow suit. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. The murky air draping over Korea since Sunday is set to clear up as the day goes by, but this fine dust has been a chronic issue for Korea for some time now. So the government and the ruling party are holding talks on the issue with a promise to devise countermeasures to improve air quality. Our EG1 has more. The OECD ranks South Korea at the very bottom of the 35 advanced nations when it comes to air quality. And to tackle that recurring issue, the government and the ruling Democratic Party held talks over the matter on Monday, promising the people their right to breathe cleaner with no carcinogens or harmful substances. And as shown by a joint study conducted by South Korea and NASA, China is responsible for one-third of the fine dust in Korea's air, a reason the government has brought up the issue of international cooperation once again. 
The government plans to upgrade the fine dust issue to a summit level issue from the current ministerial level and expand it further to an agenda shared among Northeast Asian countries. The ruling party also vowed to clamp down on local firms and institutions regarding the matter. Efforts for a careful scientific study to identify the source of emissions as well as bettering the real-time air management system is necessary. And the ruling party hopes the government swiftly take on the matter to provide the people with the clean air they deserve. The two sides have agreed to upgrade measures on diesel cars and said they're adding more standards for the construction, machinery and shipping industries to cut down their emission levels. These plans, in line with the Moon administration's goal of improving air quality by 30 percent during his term, will be released as a comprehensive set of measures by the Environment Ministry on Tuesday. Easy one, Business Daily. Global sales of flexible LED displays more than doubled on year during the second quarter, tallied at over two billion U.S. dollars. This is according to data from market tracker IHS Market, which attributed the gains to rising global demand for smartphones. Samsung Display, the sole supplier of flexible OLED panels for the newly released iPhone X, commanded a staggering 98 percent of the global market share. The market is expected to expand further as consumers demand higher quality resolution and bigger displays. And now moving on to our coverage of the markets, we have our markets contributor Lee Ji-hye joining us on the line today. Hello, Ji-hye. Hello, Jian. All right, so tell us how local stocks performed on the first trading day of the week. Sure, Ji-hyun. Korean stocks traded mostly lower today with institutions offloading large cap stocks. The benchmark Kospi fell 0.35% to close at 2,380.4, while the tech-heavy Kosdaq also fell 1.06% to close at 642.04. Blue chip stocks were mixed across the board. Market bellwether Samsung Electronics gained 1.17%. SK Hynix climbed 3.85%, and POSCO also gained 0.3%. Hyundai Motors shed 0.7%. Naver also shed 1.31%. As well as Tepco by 1.92 percent. By sectors, venture capital has been on the upsurge and adding 11 percent in gains from the previous day, while energy, retails, and furniture sectors were on the decline. Analysts are saying that losses on the main bourse are due to institutions selling large cap stocks to cash in on profits from recent gains. Then, can you give us a rundown on some of the major market events to look forward to this week? Sure, Jiyun. For Monday, the Chicago Fed National Activity Index will be released. It could be quite tricky because it'll be difficult to assess the damage coming from Hurricane Harvey, which has surely affected the industrial production and construction. August payroll data was also soft, but were sampled before Harvey's landfall. Many are forecasting the National Activity Index to slightly rise to 0.11 in comparison to minus 0.01 in July. As for Tuesday, the U.S. Consumer Confidence Index will be published with unusually strong assessment from the labor market underpinning the entire index, as well as income prospects surpassing the consensus over the previous three months. Forecasters are not expecting much of the hurricane's effect, calling for a modest retreat to 120.2 for September. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen will be delivering the keynote lunch and address at the 59th National Association for Business Economics meeting in Ohio. For Thursday, the U.S. GDP growth figures for the second quarter will be released, with third estimate expected to come in at a consensus 3.1 percent annualized rate. Also on Thursday, the U.S. international trade and goods for August is expected to widen to a consensus 65.7 billion dollars compared to the 63.9 billion in July, owing to the hurricane hurricane-related rise in oil prices. Let's shift our focus back to the domestic front. I mean, what are some key data points we should be keeping an eye on here at home? Well, Jiyun, as for Tuesday, South Korea's Consumer Confidence Index will be released for the month of September. Last month, it dropped to 109.9 from 111.2 in July. This was the first decline following a streak of six consecutive months on the rise. And as for Friday, Korea's Industrial Product Index for August will be released after it climbed to a seasonally adjusted 1.9 percent on month in July. Last. On the same day, Korea's retail sales will be announced, with the demand for fruit and ice cream amid the summer heat 
expected to have triggered a steady rise. This has been EGH for Business Daily. As NAFTA talks continue to drag on, U.S. trade negotiators are expected to partially unveil new text on Washington's proposed modifications. Now, no details are available on the changes being sought by the U.S., which is reportedly consulting various stakeholders, including businesses, on the issue. Trade experts are growing doubtful of the possibility of negotiations being wrapped up before the end of the year as scheduled. U.S. President Donald Trump has described NAFTA as a disaster while threatening to walk away from the deal unless major changes are made. Japan's manufacturing sector grew at its fastest pace in four months thanks to an increase in orders from both at home and abroad. The market and Nikkei Purchasing Managers Index was seen at 52.6 in September, beating the figure of 52.2 seen in the previous month. It also reached its highest level since May and has remained above the benchmark 50 for 13 consecutive months. Analysts attributed the rise to gains in both output and demand, with the outlook optimistic in the coming months following a strong finish to the third quarter. In recent years, Macau's gaming revenue and tourist appeal have been tumbling, dragging down the city's economy. This has prompted authorities to jazz up Hongqin Island, aimed at revising Macau's appeal as a tourist destination, and also relieve its housing shortage. Our Yi Young has this report. Just a stone's throw away from gambling haven Macau is Hongqin, a former oyster farming island which is three times larger in landmass than Macau. With land shortage becoming a problem for the gambling hub, Hong Kong, Macau and Guangdong are working together to transform Hongqin into a new tourist entertainment destination. Huge plots of land on the mountainous island have already been transformed into sprawling construction sites. Property developer Lai Sun Holdings has earmarked over $3 billion for its Novo Town project, a cultural and entertainment complex in Hongqin. Both Hong Kong and Macau, you're running out of land. If you look at the land prices, it doesn't really give you the opportunity to afford to have such a big piece of land and create something like this. Most of the land will be converted for residential or if not commercial offices. So I think this is one of the key. And second, of course, is labor. If you look at Macau and Hong Kong, look at the salary and wages level. And if you look at Hang Chin, it's still part of China, that most of the Chinese um, citizens, they don't have restriction to going in and out. So there are meaning abundant supply of labor. As a result, property prices on the island have jumped roughly 175 percent over the past two years and is expected to rise even more as infrastructure continues to develop until its opening in 2019. The great thing is also because Hongqin is a special economic zone and a free trade zone. So I think definitely people see the potentials of Hongqin and wanted to really work there and reside there. And that's natural demand. Chinese officials see Hongqin as potentially transforming Macau from a gambling destination to a more wholesome tourism location, with the former Portuguese colony's Chaim Long Ocean Kingdom laying the foundation for a seamless transition to occur. Yi Zhuyong, Business Daily. Despite unprecedented UN sanctions on North Korea over its continued missile and nuclear provocations, the regime's trade volume with its largest ally, China, is still growing. Our Yi Jong-yeon reports. Despite tough international sanctions against North Korea, which has conducted 12 missile tests in 2017 alone, it's been found that the volume of trade between the regime and its ally, China, has spiked on year. Citing data from China's General Administration of Customs, Japan's Sankei Shimbun reported Sunday that Beijing shipments to Pyongyang stood at 2.28 billion U.S. dollars during the first eight months of this year, up more than 25 percent compared to the previous year. North Korea's exports to China, on the other hand, shrank 13.5 percent, due largely to China's ban on North Korean coal products that took effect in February. Despite the drop, overall trade volume was up 7.5 percent on-year. 
Many say, therefore, that the UN Security Council's continued international sanctions against the North are ineffective when it comes to curbing transactions between Beijing and Pyongyang. However, this may no longer be true as China has slapped an import ban on North Korean iron ore and seafood since late August. It's also limiting supplies of petroleum products to Pyongyang and imports of textiles from the country under the latest UN sanctions that were adopted after the regime's sixth nuclear test. Lee jong Business Daily. Gas prices are reportedly rising in North Korea in the wake of the new UN sanctions restricting the country's access to oil. Voice of America, citing an unnamed foreign diplomat based in Pyongyang, says the gas price in the North Korean capital had more than tripled as of last Thursday compared to the beginning of the year. The UN Security Council, as part of its latest sanctions on the regime imposed earlier this month, capped Pyongyang's oil imports to 2 million barrels a year. With the Chuseok holidays almost upon us, the plenty of family gatherings set to take place. People are keeping a close eye on the prices of groceries and gift sets. And this holiday season is shaping up to be easier on the wallet, with costs falling for the first time since 2013. Our Elia Kim has the story. This year's long Chuseok holiday looks to be less costly than previous years. As families gather for elaborate meals, grocery prices have fallen for the first time in four years. Another trend has appeared as well, namely prices at traditional markets being significantly lower than that of supermarkets. After surveying 28 items normally purchased for a family of four, the grocery bill at a supermarket came to roughly $273. In comparison, the same set of goods could be purchased at $191 at a traditional market, a more than 30% discount. Costs overall have fallen around 3% from last year. Of course, many factors affect the prices of groceries. Expanded shipment destinations and production volumes lowered the prices of spinach and cabbage by 64 and 28% respectively. However, poor harvests have caused mung beans and tofu prices to rise. Jujube and chestnut prices have fallen, making it easier on customers. Gift set prices have also been trending down, particularly for apples and beef, although mushrooms and yellow corvina prices rose to buck the trend. Beef prices have fallen due to the anti-graft law, and apple prices have also decreased, owing to large production volumes. The government has decided to increase the supply of the 10 most popular food staples by about 40 percent until September 29th, just before the start of the holiday season. Around 2,500 marketplaces will be selling those items on discount to help people comfortably prepare for the Chuseok holiday. Elliot Kim, Business Daily. And here are some ideas for those of you who are staying here in Korea during the Chuseok holidays and are looking for some fun activities. Many of the country's top cultural destinations will be open to the public free of charge starting from the 30th, which is the Saturday through October 9th. This includes the four major palaces, Gyeongbokgung, Changdeokgung, Changgyeonggung, and Toksugung, as well as the Chongmyo Shrine and the royal, royal tombs of the Joseon dynasty. Various cultural programs are planned for visitors at these sites. And meanwhile, the culture ministry has designated October 21st through November 5th as Autumn Travel Week, during which travelers can experience temple stays and other unique Korean destinations for just 10,000 won. In a rapidly evolving digital age, interest is being renewed in analog culture as a way to reconnect with their emotions through nostalgia. And trend is not only limited to the older generations, but also drawing in the young generation as well with its retro cool factor. Take a look. This building is located in a residential area of Yeonidong, Seoul. The shop is a film photography studio, a type of business largely taken over by digital cameras. What's more, it specializes in black and white pictures. Since opening in 2015, it's become Seoul's top black and white specialty studio. Why was it launched as a film photography studio when everything else has gone digital? 
Unlike film photography, digital photographic work is different. Deficiencies in the shots can be retouched. This leads to diminished attention when taking pictures. There was a desire to return to the roots. That's how the idea to operate a film photography studio came about. Black and white photos are taken with a limited number of cuts on film and developed and printed through an analog process in a dark room. Only three customers can make a reservation each day. At our studio, film is dried naturally for about a day. After that comes the printing process. It takes two or three hours to print a single image. Recently, black and white Polaroids, which are cheaper and quicker to take, have also become popular. With black and white Polaroids, a single photo can be taken right away, so it's much cheaper than film. Black and white Polaroids appeal to younger people since a single shot costs about $26. Couples often come to take a picture. Black and white Polaroids target younger generations with almost no memories of analog-type photos. After taking pictures on my phone every day, it's nice to have one picture to keep. It can't be retouched, and the photo is one of a kind. It's very special, and I think it was a meaningful experience. An LP shop started business in Itaewon, a hot spot for young generations. LPs once completely eliminated from the record market represent the analog retro trend. Generally, everyone tends to listen to streaming music. But as recently as the 80s or 90s, LPs, cassette tapes, and CDs were the major developed formats which people purchased to consume. The shop was prepared so that customers could find happiness by purchasing and owning analog media like LPs and cassette tapes. About 800 customers visit each day on average. The unique tone of LPs not available with digital music is one of the reasons for their resurgence. I really like 70s and 80s music. It's different from listening to files. Listening directly to LPs offers an old school feel, so it's enjoyable. Another reason for the growing popularity is a higher collectability factor among youths thanks to famous pop stars and top idol groups releasing limited edition LPs. Many customers buy LPs as goods. LPs or vinyl media are now being propagated as hip media, so it appears some people want to demonstrate purchasing turntables and LPs to listen to music. The popularity of LPs is a global trend. With LPs enjoying a second renaissance, a domestic LP factory, which shut down 13 years ago, recently reopened. The LP craze is expected to continue into the future. This transcription group has been going since last year. Most participants are office workers who make time to attend meetings. <laughs> Rather than reading with their eyes only, transcribing each letter by hand offers mental stability. Reviews of transcription gatherings say that they offer the best rest of the week and that it was possible to be more immersed in reading. Offline gatherings are also a way to share warmth and companionship. People feel a sense of rest most of all. Daily life is so busy, people are practicing a slower lifestyle, such as a Hugo life or a healing life. The analog trend is expecting to continue, rather than becoming a passing fad. Human beings promote mechanization, but human thoughts or emotions therein were made since the past and grew from there. In line with mechanical development, analog thoughts will gradually survive. In the end, future success will depend on a fusion of digital devices and analog human sensibilities. It's important to live wisely in the digilog era. A return to analog culture amid the speed and convenience of the digital era could be seen as voluntary inconvenience.
And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.